Alabama leads the series but LSU has won the last four trips they've made to Tuscaloosa. And last year's game went into overtime Alabama won it. Lee Tiffin will kick off. Ron Brooks and Trendon Holiday are the deep man. This will be Ron Brooks number 13 near side. Tackled and down at the 26 yard line. The stop made by number 20 Tyrone King. Jordan Jefferson as we pointed out he seems to have elevated things just the last two times out. Well remember against Florida he only threw 17 throws. It seems to me they're going to need more out of him against this defense or against Florida's defense to really move the ball. They will open in the spread. On first down. Little flip left side caught by Tolliver and he slips and falls at the 27 yard line. Now let's check the lineups presented by Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Up front, Saron Black starting his 49th consecutive game. DeRossick, T-Bob Bear, Lyle Hitt and Barksdale. Tolliver and LaFell the wide out, Scott the running back. Joseph for Richard Dixon the tight end. Dixon will not play. An injury that we just learned about an hour before the game. Here's a quick toss left to R.J. Jackson, number 28. Only his eighth catch of the year, and five of those came very early in the season. Defensively, Washington, Cody, and Dederick up front. The linebackers led by the All-American, Rolando McLean. And the secondary is quite good. You've got Arenas and Baron Woodall and Kareem Jackson. Third and five. Joseph back with time. He'll run. He does this quite well. Jefferson might not have gotten it. That's pretty close. Jefferson has made some big plays with his feet, Vern, but he's been sacked a lot, too, with his feet, trying to do too much. I thought he could pick up the first down here. This was a good stop. Jackson right there, right on the line. It's very close. Got a foot. Well, one of those symmetrically perfect stats, 23 sacks given up by LSU, 23 sacks gained by Alabama. Did you see what Les Miles just sh said? He shook his head and he said, no, we're going to punt. Well, in part, his reputation gained on a Saturday night against Florida. In a memorable evening, LSU went for it five times on fourth downs, converted all five. This year, they're only two of nine on fourth down, and here is Arenas. Ready to return the punt of Derek Hilton. Nice and high, Arenas with a fair catch taken at the 20 yard line. Take another look at Les Miles. You noticed it as it was happening. Watch him shake his head. We're going to punt it. Punt it. <laughs> now, Greg McElroy out of South Lake Carroll High School. He has never lost high school or Alabama as a starting quarterback, but he has struggled especially the last three or four games. Look at this. Both teams. LSU called three straight runs and look at Alabama on first down here. <laughs> Five wide. McElroy goes it a little high but it's caught. Brad Smelly the H back and now the official on the sideline says no catch. It was called incomplete, but this is a great read by Greg McElroy. 
He's reading Jai Eugene right there. Watch him work Jai Eugene with his eyes on the short receiver and then deliver it to the long receiver. It's a perfect throw, but the ball was bobbled late, incomplete. And good news, Gary. Colin Peake, who was questionable. Now, are they going to look at this? No, that, that, was, that, that was a great hit by Chad Jones, and that's incomplete. It is under review. Colin Peake injured in pregame warm-ups against Tennessee was questionable up until a half an hour before the game. He walked over and talked to uh, his head coach, according to Tracy Wolfson. I think he convinced him that he could go today. Well, he took every play in warm-ups, so he tried to. And, you know, this Alabama team has been amazingly healthy. Their offensive line and peak and all their key players have started every football game. I'm glad our communication system works. I've just been told the play is not under review, but the replay booth took a power hit, so they've had to stop things for the moment. In the meantime, let's check the starting lineups for the Crimson Tide. Thomas Ritter, by the way, is our referee today. Up front, Carpenter, Johnson, Bajos, Jones, and Davis. Julio Jones, Marquise Mays are the uh, wideouts. Ingram, Preston Dial, well, that has been changed now as Mike Williams was listed as the starter, but Colin Peake did start. And Greg McElroy is the quarterback. Now, the announcement right there to the cr crowd and the reason they're booing is, as Vern had told you, the replay booths down, so there are no replays. Until he gets his power up on any close play now, the play on the field stands the way it's called by the officials. After the incomplete pass, it's second down. Mark Ingram comes back alongside McElroy. LSU brings three. There's the pass to McElroy. He's stuffed. Might not have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Jai Eugene, number four. And let's check the defenses. It was given to us, Alem, Woods, Alexander, and Levingston up front. The linebackers, Kelvin Shepard, 13 tackles in each of the last three games. And in the secondary, Hawkins, Taylor, Chad Jones, and Peterson. The only change it looks like is Jai Eugene is starting ahead of Hawkins. And so far, Peterson is matching up with Julio no matter where he goes. There he is right there. He switched sides for the play. That's best on best. Here's McElroy inside to Marquise Mays. Got a seam. Gets a block. First down, Alabama. Well, both coordinators are calling the same plays basically to start the game. Wide receiver screens. Now, to me, that tells me that they respect the front seven and the rush defense for both teams and are trying to spread this game out a bit. First down 10 after a 17-yard pickup. Now, Michael Williams is in a tight end. He's tight to the left side. McElroy. Drifts back, goes deep right side. Incomplete, intended for Darius Hanks, number 15, and defended by Jai Eugene. You know, another good throw by McElroy, and he's not taking the easy throw. I like his start. He had Julio Jones short, but he had one-on-one -on -one to the outside. You have to throw that ball and assume your receiver's going to beat the defender. It was darn near a perfect throw. Good coverage, everything good on that play. It brings up second and 10. 16 and 0, they won the state championship. South Lake Carroll, midway between Dallas and Fort Worth. Blitz look here for LSU. Play clock at two. Here they come. All of them from the corner. McElroy hit, he's got Julio, Julio Jones and Peterson tips it away. Well, right with him. Two great football players. Now, Alabama was outnumbered on this play, so he's going to get hit. McElroy knows he's going to get hit from the outside. It's Danny McRae. But watch Peterson. He's right in the pocket of Julio Jones, calmly turns around, and swats it down. Perfect play. Well, we saw him against Georgia and A.J. Green 
And uh, he's not shy. He won't back nope. down from anybody. Well, you can't. Not at that position. Can't be shy. Third down. Blitz again. McElroy finds his third option. That's a tight end. Williams gets a block from Marquise Mays. And it is a first down across the 50. Well, matched up by Brandon Taylor, number 15, is one on run right here. Let's see what happens on this play. McElroy looks left, comes back right, and hits the tight end on the play. Michael Williams crosses the route and hits the tight end wide open on the play. And a first down, no score, 11 minutes to go, opening quarter. Play fake, pass again, deep, he's got a man, and he overthrows Marquise Mays. Had him by two strides. Down that right sideline, it was four on four, Mays and Jai Eugene. Well, anybody can overthrow a ball, Vern. I mean, that happens, but you must keep it on the playing field. This ball didn't stay on the playing field. No one could have caught it. That was the mistake on the play. And McElroy was hit by Brandon Taylor, number 15. Boy, John Chavis is bringing the house almost every play here. John Chavis in his first year as defensive coordinator, having spent 30 years of his life, and there's a fumble. They tried the Wildcat, and Mark Ingram, who dropped the ball, had it uh, recovered by Tennessee, one of the key plays, muffs this one on the snap. Hit him in the helmet. Sure did. Wow. Mm. Loss of nine. Ingram had gone 322 touches without a lost fumble. He did fumble once last year, recovered his own, and here's the pass inside. Ingram with the catch, and it'll be short of the first down by a bunch. And, and I think you see the story of the game right there and why both teams will end up blitzing in this game. Once they can turn the down and distance in their favor, both of these defenses are so tough to pick up first downs against. That brings on P.J. Fitzgerald, Trindon Holiday, who's averaging 14.6 yards per return. Had a couple of big ones against Tulane last week. And he'll let this one bounce, and it's going to go out of bounds at the eight-yard line. Nine twenty six to go in the first quarter. And after the forty one yard punt, LSU has the ball for the second time. Scott goes left, sheds the first tackler, and then guess who's there? Terrence Cody. Ball came out late, but well after the whistle. Well, Mc Orlando McLean turned the ball in, and when you turn it in, you know what's in against the Alabama defense? In is number 62. That's, <laughs> that's a lot of in in there. Scott again going left. Cody again up on top. He had teammates down near the bottom of the pile. Eric Anders was the first, number 32. Cody, of course, with Kim, an Alabama immortal with two blocked field goals in the win over Tennessee. Third and seven. And for the year, uh, Vern, 13 for 49, LSU on third and seven plus. Keelan Williams is on the field. So is R.J. Jackson. 
Play clock at five. Let's it go deep down the middle. Caught wide open. There is a flag as LaFell makes the catch. Too many players in the backfield, I think, for LSU. I thought it was an illegal formation when I saw it the first time. It will go against LSU. I, and they gate the first down. Backfield, 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 backfield. That's one too many. <laughs> Math at Purdue. You're only allowed to formation. Five players in the backfield against the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Third down. And 12. Jefferson from the end zone. Goes deep into double coverage. Robbie Green is the closest to the ball. Number 23, that one had almost no chance. Well, there was a big free safety in the middle of the field, and Green was tracking this all the way. You have big LaFell, but that was no chance. You know, I thought the offensive line did a nice job there for LSU, though. That's good protection. Derek Helton on to punt for the second time, and he does so checking his heels to make sure they're not touching the end line. And Arenas at the 45-yard line. Here's the punt by Helton. There's a flag before the snap. Prior to the snap, ball start, 56, offense, half the distance to the goal, fourth down. It's the veteran, Perry Riley. And, yep, he just moved just before the snap. You could see him shuffle. Arenas has moved up to the 40-yard line. Nice and high and fairly deep. Arenas back at midfield. Shakes the first tackle. Can't get by the second. So good downfield coverage by the Tigers. Led by R.J. Jackson. Fine punt. 47 yards. Only two on the return. Well, there are a couple of coaches in this league. Uh, who, who can't afford that? Uh, Anyway, I never dreamed, Gary, that, that the LSU-Alabama encounter would be overshadowed by off-the-field goings-on in Gainesville, but it uh, certainly occupied everybody's attention most of the week. Here's a play fake. McElroy off his back foot, double coverage, and Peterson's down there. So was Jones, and it's incomplete. Coming after him, aren't they? I mean, this John Chavis has said we're not going to watch Alabama just sit around and dink and dunk. If you're going to throw the ball, you're going to throw the ball against us coming after you. Well, Marquise May is saying, hey, look at me. Yeah. And the quarterback saying, I can't look. I don't have time. <laughs> John Chavis, first year defensive coordinator after that uh, illustrious stay at his alma mater, Tennessee. Here's a little quick clip out to Ingram. He's got some room and he breaks the first tackle moves it down to the 40 it's going to be third and short this little quick flip has been good to Alabama I saw Ingham score a touchdown in, on this you expect them to come right at you all the time and they're doing a little different wrinkle with their run game well they have gone primarily with the pass now they're looking at third and two And McElroy will move under center. Tall 
Toss Ingram. Ooh, didn't get much blocking help on that right side. Tell you, the tight end, Michael Williams, got backed up. And Al Woods, number 97, makes the stop. Well, to run the ball in this Alabama offense, you need to have your offensive lineman and your tight ends blocking. But you know what else really shows up for LSU is the speed and quickness of these inside linebackers, Perry Riley and Kelvin Shepard. They have really stepped up their football game. Now, Chad Jones, who's a little more sure-handed than Trendon Holiday, and who also, by the way, has a 93-yard punt return for a touchdown, is back. He drifts under it, lets it go well over his head. That's a touchback. It'll come out to the 20. Late first quarter, Tuscaloosa, no score. Third time LSU has had the ball, first two times, three and out. They'll go from the I formation now with Scott at fullback and Keelan Williams at the tailback, now the shift. There's the clip, left side, Tolliver's open as the defender slipped and fell. Woodall misses the tackle, and Kareem Jackson, who had slipped and fallen, catches up to make the tackle. I'll tell you, has LSU grown with their offense since Florida? There's Tolliver, top of the screen, going one-on-one. -on -one. This is a back shoulder slant. One of the plays that's really been coming in college football now is that back shoulder slant against zones, and it was perfectly executed inside. Terrence Cody coming right through. He is a man inside. That was a 41-yard gain, first long gainer of the game for LSU. Give to the first man through. It was Scott. Same lineup, Scott and Keelan Williams at tailback. Now remember last year, LSU ran the ball for 201 yards against this Alabama defense. So far, minus one. Russell Shepard is on the field. And he lines up behind. Jefferson, a flag has been thrown. Too many men on the field? Dead ball. Substitution infraction. 12 players on the field. Five-yard penalty. Replay the down. Terrence Tolliver took too long to get off the field, and that's an illegal trying to gain advantage. That's why that play is called. Even if you don't huddle, it puts the defense at a disadvantage, and that will be called. And so a second and 11, 425 to go. Opening quarter, LSU got this far on the strength of a 41-yard reception by Tolliver. Shepard's longest run of the year against Auburn, 69 yards. Here's the option pitch. No. Late. Javier Arenas. I tell you, they may get better at the option as the game goes along, but they are not a good option team. And Jordan, Jordan Jefferson is not a good option quarterback yet. This was pitched. It was a bad relationship between Shepard and the quarterback and a bad play again. Penalties and big plays have hurt the LSU offense. Marcel Darius, number 57, one of those who forced that pitch to be made quickly. Third and 18. Blitz from the corner. Got there, but the ball is delivered. It is, however, incomplete. Mark Barron almost got to Jordan Jefferson. Fourth down. Well, Mark Barron was coming free, and Jordan Jefferson did a great job of holding off the blitz till the last second and throwing the ball to Brandon LaFell. Coming from the left side, Jefferson waits, waits, but LaFell just stands there. He had to know it was man-to-man -man coverage. You got to run away from your guy there. Jefferson was left short by his receiver on that play. Alice Miles will go with his place kicker as the pooch punter. 
It's Josh Jasper. And this one will bounce. Oh boy. Right along the one yard line. And Ron Brooks got down there and downed the ball. A 46 yard punt for Jasper. Alabama at the one yard line. Ingram. Little bit of breathing room. He's almost to the five. All right. Thank you, Tim. Oregon 5 0 in the Pac 10 for the second time. Here's McElroy from the end zone. He goes for Marquise Mays. Got it. McElroy told us yesterday, I am comfortable going deep. I'm actually pretty surprised that Chad Jones could not get to this throw. Watch an inside release on this takeoff, and Jones did not get there. Inside release up the hash, and Jones did not get there. Jones came up limping after the play. Perfect throw, great catch by May. 37 yard pass and catch and a first down at the 42 yard line. I think you expect your free safety to get to that throw. Blitz coming from Harry Coleman. No flag in the backfield. The pass is complete for LSU. Well, this couldn't be any better for Alabama fans right here. A throw like this. This is about the third good throw that he's made. And Greg McElroy knows how important his play is to this football team. You got to handle the pressure if you're a quarterback. And there's big pressure playing quarterback for this football team. First down and 10. No score. Final 140 in the first quarter. Ingram. Oh, they ready for him. That's Drake Nevis, number 92. And no gain, second down. Ingram with four rushes for 12 yards. I have said a few times about the LSU defense that their back seven is as good as anybody in college football, but their defensive line has been not been making the plays as compared to past national championship teams but you know what they have been doing stopping the run those linebackers are the beneficiaries of those good defensive linemen now second down and 10 here's McElroy coming to his left drill oh boy almost picked off wow Patrick Peterson had a bead on that one. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfs. And guys, LSU playing without one of their star linebackers. Perry Riley has been on the bench with a right ankle injury. They taped him up. It looks like he's going to try and get back in there. All right, Trace, thanks. Third and 10 now. That means Jacob Cutero will be his replacement out there, number 54. That's Cutrera started the uh, season as the starting middle linebacker had an interception of 29 yards for a touchdown in the opening game against Washington. The Huskies blitz coming again. McElroy avoids the pressure from Kelvin Shepard. He'll run and skips out of bounds short of the first down at the 44 yard line. It was a three man line. But a four man blitz because Calvin Shepard came on the play. He's the one that actually flushed McElroy out of the pocket. Once he gets out of the pocket against that zone, there was nothing to go to but run. Well, it's a game of field position here in the first quarter. And because of that 37 yard pass caught by Marquise Mays, Alabama punting and the potential to put LSU deep again. This one down at the nine yard line. 35 yard punt nothing on the return. LSU has it last time they had possession of the ball a 41 yard pass got them across midfield. Now they've got it again but again inside their 10 Thomas Parsons is the fourth fullback used this year by LSU. He leads the way now for Scott. And not much there until two weeks ago. There's Riley. And looks like he's going to head into the locker room. 
Perry Riley, the senior out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. And that uh, should be the final play of the first quarter. That's the end of one. We thought it'd be a low-scoring game. It certainly is. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. On this gorgeous November afternoon, and LSU and Alabama, a game of some consequence. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, our entire CBS crew here. Mitch Joseph, the tight end, goes tight to the right. Second and eight, Keelan Williams, and there's a flag thrown on the near side. Prior to the snap, false start, 19, offense, five-yard penalty, still second half. Another penalty for Les Miles' crew that uh, yep. uh, will exasperate him. Uh, we expected an even Steven heavyweight fight. We've not been uh, disappointed. No, that's exactly what we got. I mean, these are good football players, and that's why when we said it goes back to the quarterbacks, and I think if you look at McElroy start, six for 12 for 88 yards. That's good news for Alabama, but LSU is hanging right in there. They have tremendous talent. Play fake, pass out of the end zone. It's caught by D'Angelo Peterson. My gracious. 28-yard gain, both teams throwing from deep within their own end of the field. D'Angelo Peterson is a backup tight end, but he was a former wide receiver moved to tight end just the early this year. Look at that matchup, and look at what an easy throw that is coming out of your own end zone. Only his third catch of the year, and a first down out at the 33-yard line. Jefferson with pressure darts to his left and is hauled down by Eric Anders number 32. That's uh, uh, it's worth another look I think Gary throwing from uh, the end zone. Well one of the things you have to do as a quarterback is when you feel that pressure you need to buy time to throw it. This time he felt the pressure from Lorenzo Washington number 97 at his feet. So he knew he had such an easy throw that he just kind of fell back and lobbed it out there. It's a bad habit, though, and it could come back to haunt him. Russell Shepard on the field again. They quick flip it behind him. Nice catch. And then he breaks a tackle. And is look at the enthusiasm of the assistant coaches. How about that? A gain of 13. Well, Shepard, who we did not see at all, against Florida is one of those guys I think you have to get the ball to. He's a Percy Harvin type athlete. True freshman out of Houston, recruited, he said, by 72 schools, came down to LSU or Florida. Jefferson near side, incomplete. D'Angelo Peterson, the intended receiver. <laughs> And a moment ago, here's Perry Riley having uh, made a quick visit to the locker room. Second down and 10. He didn't look spry, did he? No. He, uh, he came out gingerly to me. Scott, deep back as Jefferson looks over toward the bench. Alabama's coming. Jefferson dodges the tackle behind the line and gets down to the 45 yard line third and two Shepard is on the field they hand it short to Scott he does not get there yes he did oh he, he did second. yes yep. indeed I thought his initial contact had stopped him great short yardage running here by Charles Scott who lined up at fullback quick handoff look at Rolando McLean goes in the exact spot but taken nicely by Saran Black, number 70. Wonderful block by one of the great offensive linemen in college football, Saran Black. And Corey Reamer is the Alabaman who missed the tackle. Black starting his 49th game today. 49 in a row. Now to Tyler, Texas. First down and 10. First conversion for LSU. 
Scott again. Woo. Charles Scott had that great start a year ago. Six 100 yard games early. He's only had one 100 yard plus game this year. And the, the number's much more modest. And it's funny, when we talked to Kirby Smart, the defensive coordinator for Alabama, he said, you know, I'm a little just nervous about them running the ball in the eye, just right at us. Here's Jefferson near side. Tolliver nailed as soon as he makes the catch. Arenas is there defending. These wide receiver screens have to be thrown accurately. Jefferson tossed it out there, but see, it wasn't allowing Tolliver to catch it and run all in one movement, and it won't work. Third and seven. No score. Second quarter in Tuscaloosa. Blitz again. Jefferson steps up. He'll run it. He's got the first plus. R.J. Jackson put a block on Mark Barron that was worthy of attention. Well, I'll tell you, Ch Charles Scott does a nice job of picking up the blitz. And then Alabama is in man-to-man -man coverage. Here comes the blitz. Watch it picked up from the outside. Then that tied defense and man to man. Once you get a defense in man, that quarterback can really gouge it. Watch the block. There it is. Close. First down and 10 after the gain of 14. Tyler Edwards is on as a tight end. Here's the option near side. The pitch. Scott inside the 15. Brandon Dedrick with the tackle. Well, Vern, I just said that. So far, I have not seen Jordan Jefferson run the option well. And then last time he keeps it, and this time he executes it perfectly. He hangs on as long as he can, and then just before Justin Woodall hits him, he pitches it out for another good football play. And on second down and one, the 12th play of the drive, and Russell Shepard is back on the field, number 10. Tries to sweep, does Shepard. Cuts it back. He picks up a first down. On the last play, first and 10 LSU trying to be the first to score. Good protection in the end zone. Wide open is D'Angelo Peterson with his first touchdown catch of 2009. Matchup well read by Jordan Jefferson. The safety was out double teaming Ruben Randall, the wide receiver, and it was one on one Corey Reamer against a speed tight end. And the tight end won. Jasper's extra point is up and good. Corey Reamer's caught in a bind here. There's the tight end. Watch the safety move over to the outside on the play. Mark Barron, and it's not much that Reamer can do. A great route by D'Angelo Peterson and a perfect throw. What a drive. 13 plays. And what sad news this looks like. Swan wow. Black. Medical staff out there immediately, and he is in obvious pain. We'll be right back. Saron Black uh, did walk off without assistance. He's getting some uh, very serious attention on the sideline. Now let's go back to the touchdown. Well, we talked about the route and the. Th now it's time for the Jack Lakes Beef Jerky Action Cam. I was too quick there, wasn't I? Here's Keelan Williams. Watch him chip inside on Marcel Darius and allows Jefferson to throw that football. Good route, good coverage, good read, good protection. And a 7-0 LSU lead. 
I wanted some of that beef jerky so bad. I, I, you just, you wanted to hear the guy. <laughs> you know, he, he, he emotes. I know. He does, know. doesn't he? What a drive. How about that drive against this Alabama defense for LSU? How about this? First, first half touchdown allowed this year against SEC opponents. Jasper will kick off. Arenas and Julio Jones are the deep men. Arenas. Still going. Out near midfield. A 40-yard kickoff return. He's just so good, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, he's just so good. Every time he touches the ball, he's just looking for that little crease. Look at that cutback. I mean, that cutback at full speed is just so hard to stop. And Perry Riley, good news for LSU, is back on the field. Javier Arenas, a 40-yard kickoff return. First down, 10. Trent Richardson is on the field. Here's McElroy. Four-man rush comes right. Julio Jones with the catch. It's just amazing to me that that's only his 21st catch of the year. One touchdown all season. And that came against Arkansas. It really is. I mean, he's such a good football player. Might have been nicked. Everybody says he's on the right side of your screen right there. Little inside choice route against zone. Easy pitch and catch. Now, what I'm looking at here, Vern, is Alabama has rushed the ball in the, what is we, in the middle of the second quarter for six yards in this football game. Richardson, spin move, bangs his way for a first down at the 35-yard line. Brandon Taylor finally took him down. That's a pickup of 11. Remember what Mark Ingram told us. He believes Richardson is further along than he was as a true freshman at the same time of the season. Big time recruit, Trent Richardson. Ingram was telling us uh, as Richardson stays on the field and Ingram gets a rest, he hit a real slump last year, right about this time, with uh, Tennessee and LSU. Here's Richardson to the 30-yard line. Charles Alexander, number 91, makes the tackle. Alexander, a sixth-year senior, is the only player on the LSU team who was actually recruited and played for Nick Saban. He played two games for Saban six years ago. This is his first time to play right. here because he had two medical redshirt years, and he missed the game in 07 and 05. Charles Alexander. Here's this matchup, eight versus seven. McElroy back, steps up, settles for the short man. Marquise Mays on the underneath crossing route. Chris Hawkins with the tackle, but a gain of 12. And a first down. This is just a wonderful job of McElroy feeling the pocket and knowing where his receivers are. He wants to go downfield and watch how he changes his eyes from downfield to short field and makes a very accurate throw on the run. Greg McElroy is out to a hot hot start. Boy, he really, really yep. is. And he, uh, as we said, he had such modest numbers against Tennessee, only 120 yards, but he, he managed the game well. And no turnovers. Oh, he's got a man wide open, oh, and he misses man. it. Julio Jones. Oh, my gosh. I'll give you a stat. That's the 13th throw at number eight in the red zone. 0 for 13. Total busted coverage. You know, I've, I've had this happen before to me. When your guard turns around Barrett Jones and doesn't like the throw, you know it's a bad throw. Number 75 turns around. GD, what was that? Uh, that's what he got right there. Uh, Barrett Jones is a 4.0 grade point average, so he does know from... from <laughs> <laughs> he understands. Here's the blitz. McElroy goes deep. There's a trip in at Burton contact, I guess. No flag. Intended for Hanks. Yeah, the ball was not catchable either. Chad Jones cuts underneath it. 
feet get tangled up. All out blitz, no free safety on the play at all. You see, on that play, Hanks was coming across the field and McElroy threw the ball deep. There was miscommunication there. Look at this, Gary. It just uh, underlines the point oh, you made. 27% oh. in the red zone. Lowest in the NCAA. They have been uh, morbidly bad. Third and 10. McElroy will have to run. Looks for help. He's not going to get close. He's down at the 11 yard line. It'll be fourth down. Danny McCray, number 44, makes the tackle. And that will bring on Lee Tiffin. McElroy really took one on this run. A late hit. Good coverage that time by the LSU defense. Oh, man. And that was Kutera, I think, the linebacker. Here's the good news. Look at that graphic. 20 of 23. Here's the bad news. He's had to kick 23 field goals. Again, they come up short. This one for 28 yards. He's the number two all-time scorer in Alabama history. And with that kick, he climbs within five points of tying Philip Doyle for the all-time lead. Crimson Tide on the board, but Les Miles' team leads 7-3. We'll return after this message and a word from your local station. 25 seniors, let alone the, all the other guys that are right. going to play in the NFL. Tiffin just kicked the field goal that put Alabama on the board. Holiday and Brooks are the deep men. And Holiday grabs this at the goal line. Near side. Oh, we mentioned he had two big kickoff returns in the game against Tulane, both of 50 yards. That one's out near the 29 yard line. I'd like to see a race between Holiday and the Aflac. Duck. <laughs> uh, it's time for the Aflac trivia question. Which school outside the Pac-10 Big Ten has the most Rose Bowl appearances? Gee, I wonder if it could have a tie-in with our game. Hmm. You suppose? First, first down and 10, 7-3. Saran Black is back out on the field. That's good news for LSU. Brandon LaFell in the slot to the right. Jefferson gets the snap from T. Bob Abair. And LaFell gets the catch out near the 30 yard line. Well, remember, Saran Black, 49 straight starts. Here's the injury. Yeah, there he is at right tackle on the extra point team. He goes low on the block and kind of gets his knee twisted or ankle. Oh. Here's the pass over the middle. Incomplete. Tolliver juggled it. Well, it is so good to see him back. He's such a, a valuable member of this offensive line. And you go back to Andrew Whitworth's days. Whitworth started 52 consecutive games was succeeded by Black. So between the two of them, 101 straight starts at what left tackle. What, eight years? Yeah. Eight straight years. Isn't that something? Yep. Whitworth now in the Cincinnati Bengal organization as a starter. Third down. Another blitz. Jefferson runs away from it, pulls up and just throws it away. He was under immense pressure. Robbie Green. And Rolando McLean. Well, you know, Rolando McLean just has a sense of when to stay back and when to stay in it. The blitz is going to come from the backside. It's a good call by Gary Croton from LSU. But watch Rolando McLean. Senses a sprint out, and then he senses, go get him. And that's exactly what he did right there. I think one of the great football players in college football, Rolando McLean. Arena's back. 5.09 to go, and Derek Hilton on to punt. Oh, he's strong. Yes. Arenas near the 15. Looks for the wall. Can't find it. There's a flag down. Chase Clement, number 88, was the first man who made contact. That's a 51-yard punt. Yeah, I think and Morris, seven on the return. I think Morris Claiborne. Number 17, a backup corner, had a shove in the back on the play. <laughs> 
By the way, the replay system is back oh, in operation. Yeah. We didn't we mention it? that. As far as I know, it is. Yes. We were told the replay booth took a power hit. Right. During the return, the illegal block in the back, number 17, receiving team, half the distance to the goal, first down. Yeah, Brad Smelly on the left side. As Clement went to make the tackle, a little push, a little nudge. Time call, 7-3, LSU. 7-3 with under five to go first half. And let's take a look at our Home Depot tools to victory. Well, we spoke about Julio Jones not getting enough throws, but that doesn't mean there's not other guys. And Marquise Mays is the guy who now is making it available for Greg McElroy to move the football down the field. I think that's good news for Alabama, finding another guy. But when you got a wide open touchdown, you got to hit Julio Jones. I think that is going to be the most memorable play, barring something here in the last well, five minutes. If it, it doesn't come out with a victory, that right. play will be run a few times. Out of the shotgun, handoff up the middle, goes to Mark Ingram. All the way out to the 35-yard line. Harry Coleman, number 24, got up with Mark Ingram, number 22, and then Peterson was the second man there. Well, look at John Chavis is going to move his safety up on the play, and that means only one safety way back. So when you gash this formation, the second layer is way, way back, and Ingram is really tough to handle. Watch him jump. He's so good at those hop jump plays. You know, he's just got a feel for the game and, and such a, you know, it's just, it's not just five yard runs, 10 yard runs, but he can break the long ones too. Patrick Peterson is the injured player. And uh, we'll step aside and let you know what's going on with him when we come back. Patrick Peterson able to run off the field on his own. He's on the sideline right now. And that's a. Uh, Revisit the injury. There he is, number seven. He spins Ingram down and lands with all the weight right on his tailbone. How about those uh, vanity eye blacks they yeah. got now? Yeah. Vanity patches. Right. Number one defense. Right. That's what it said. First down, 10. McElroy, left side. Wide open, one on one. Marquise Mays, fourth catch in the first half. That one's a pickup of 11, four on well, four. This was just too much of a cushion for the LSU defense on this one. I mean, this is going to be 10 yards, and Jai Eugene just starts running backwards at the snap. That has been there, and Peterson comes back on the field. And by the way, Chris Hawkins is in the game now also. Hawkins uh, normally listed as the starting quarterback. You see him at the bottom of your screen. He's off Marquise Mays on this side. McElroy looking deep to this one man all the way down. Julio Jones. And Peterson covering him. Very interesting call there by Jim McElwain. You got a defensive back that's injured. Let's see if he can run. One on one, Julio Jones and Peterson, and they get their feet tangled. Incidental contact. On your left is Jim McElwain, offensive coordinator. Getting your feet tangled like that is just part of the game. Saw Burton Burns, the running back coach, next to him. Second down, incidental contact. Ingram. You know what's a little surprising to me, Vern, is LSU basically runs a 4-2-5 defense. They have five defensive backs. You can call Harry Coleman, number 24, outside linebacker all you want, but he's a safety. I'm surprised that Alabama hasn't tried to test that 4-2-5, which is basically a nickel with their power running game. They've just basically conceded and say, we want to throw the ball. Alabama's run for 55 yards. And they're looking at third and eight here with three and a half to go. Roy Upchurch. A running back split wide to the right. McElroy, it's a three down lineman now, and they bring four. McElroy across the middle, missed incomplete, him. and missed he missed him. him. Yep. Boy, did he ever. Marquise Mays 
And it's fourth down and eight. Good protection by the offensive line. He just led Mays too much. It. He went to the right player and overthrew it by about three feet. A lot of good on that play, but again, an inaccurate pass by McElroy. That'll bring Chad Jones back to return the punt. Mentioned he's used interchangeably with Holiday and had a 93 yard touchdown return of a punter. Here's PJ Fitzgerald. That will uh, come to rest at the 17 yard line. 40 yard punt, nothing on the return. Here comes the duck. Which school outside the Pac 10 Big Ten has the most Rose Bowl appearances? You know about the tie in with the Pac 10 Big Ten going on forever. And the answer, Alabama. Six times they've gone west. I would have never guessed that. Well, we're doing a game, make it <laughs> a hint. I, I thought there was a pretty good choice. It was either going to be LSU or Alabama. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. I USC. Yep. Yeah. Michigan. I don't think Michigan's going to get there this year. Congratulations. It's a shot. I know it is. Purdue beat him today. I know. Well, Gary's happy. Tracy's in mourning. It's first down and ten. In the meantime, Scott is the running back. Seven three, LSU. Nothing. Nope. Lorenzo Washington as yes, he did he did yep. a great job on that play he took on his blocker he never lost outside leverage and the play just got blown up blew up from the outside both teams all three timeouts left 240 to go Jefferson 8 of 13 McElroy 9 of 19 but he started off really well and then missed a wide open Julio Jones in the end zone for an Alabama touchdown. Stunts. Jefferson nailed as he lets it go, and it's too far intended for Tolliver. Javier Arenas. Yes, good coverage on the play. Nico Johnson on the blitz this time. Javier Arenas on the blitz. Rolando McLean on the blitz. Oh. Brandon Dedrick on the blitz. That's a lot of guys. Jefferson took one right in the chops that time. The backup is Jared Lee, who started most of last year. Young man out of Brenham, Texas, who had such a horrible difficulty with throwing interceptions a year ago. This one again could have been called and Dedrick. Watch him lower the helmet. This is a point of emphasis this year. Watch Dedrick number 95 lower the helmet here. And catch him right in the chest. Oh. oh, for us guys that don't have big chests, that hurt. But he did lower his helmet there, and that's the one they're trying to get the defenses not to do. Jared Lee, the sophomore, seven interceptions returned for touchdowns last year. Jefferson earned the starting spot near the end of last season. We'll see how Jefferson uh, reacts when we come back. Well, as Jefferson got to his feet, Les Miles came out and had a chat with his quarterback. Yeah, he said, can you go? And once he said, I can go, Les Miles took the timeout because that way he can put Jefferson back in the game. With an injury timeout, you wouldn't be able to come back on the field. He'd have to sit out one play. That leaves LSU with two. Brandon Dederick with the helmet right in the rib cage. Now I would assume if the ball isn't stopped by an incomplete pass and Nick Saban will use one of his timeouts. Third and 12. Four down for the Crimson Tide. Jefferson has time, goes right, being chased by Mark Barron, and he's hauled out of bounds. Alabama will get the ball back. That, of course, stops the clock with 2.13 to go. And Alabama will get the punt with all three timeouts remaining. How ironic. Mark Barron was blitzing, but he was picked up so well that it allowed him to come back on the play and make it. And had he gone three, it would have been a first down. 
Derek Helton on to punt. He's been quite effective today. Javier Arenas, always a threat to take it all the way. He's at the 35. Return on all the way. See what Arenas has in mind. Backs up. Oh, oh my gosh. Danny McCray. Oh. Just shows you the athletes both of these teams have. Mm. Just as he catches the ball, McCray beats the, the blocking on the play and just lays out Arenas. Arenas says he wasn't tackled, but his forward progress, that was a good call to stop that play right there. 53-yard punt, nothing on the return. 141 to go before the break, and here comes <laughs> Alabama. Vern since McElroy missed Julio Jones. He's one for five, including that play. He's one for five. He's been inaccurate. I don't know if it bothered him or what, but the stats say one for five. Ingram only 38 yards on six carries. He splits way wide left. The pass inside to Marquise Mays, and he is tackled by the ankle. Kelvin Shepard, number 11. Beautiful play by Shepard. You know, we saw him break out, Vern, and I actually went to him after the game and told Calvin Shepard he was wonderful against Georgia. He was all over the field. Watch him on this play. Reach out and save a big play for the LSU defense. Player down, it's Pep Levingston, number 95 for LSU. Well, remember... Prior to the field goal, he had Julio Jones wide open in the end zone. And here's what's happened on other occasions. That's Darius Hanks. Marquise Mays. Time called. We'll be right back. Pep Levingston on the LSU bench. And as we get back to play, it's second and nine at the 25. Ingram way wide to the left. McElroy, short route. Marquise Mays comes underneath again. And uh, that's going to be an Alabama first down. Clock stops while they reset the chain. 113 to go. LSU is willing to trade time for yards right now. This was a very deep zone. They're giving the underneath throw. They're giving the short throw at least until the 50 yard line. They will do that. McElroy, it's there underneath it again. again, and Ingram almost dropped it. He does get uh, a modest change. Should gain. be a timeout here by Alabama. They do take one. Yep, 55 seconds to go. That is their first of three. Two top uh, 10 teams, LSU and Alabama, only the second time since 78 they've met when they were both ranked in the top 10. 55 seconds to go. McElroy, Julio Jones breaks free across the 50 to the 49. That's a timeout. A 12 yard game. I think there's a very successful movement by Alabama. Now they got the ball over half the field. Clock stops. A very good drive right now. McElroy comes right. Got his tight end, Brad Smelly. That's going to stop the clock at the 39. So almost a field goal range. Right. Now. And, and well managed again by Alabama. Both sides have a strategy here right now, but Alabama has smartly taken what's given there. Now this LSU defense has not gotten a lot of sacks this year. They've tried to blitz and bring pressure from different angles, but the front four does not make the plays. There you go, 106th in the nation. Sacks last in the SEC. On first down, 41 seconds remaining. And Alabama, two timeouts left. Ingram again splits wide to the right side. McElroy's going deep into double coverage. The oh. flag is thrown. Peterson pleading, no, not me. Look at the official look back at him. Now he's going to go to another official. <laughs> Nobody will listen. Great, great matchup here. Julio Jones gets an inside release. 
Peterson puts his hand on his back, it looks like to me. Right there is the play. One little shove right when the ball Defense. was in the 15 air. 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. I think because the ball was in the air, that's why it was called pass interference, obviously. Had that ball not been thrown, he would have got away with that shove. And so, a first down after the penalty, 36 seconds to go. Now, yep. will John Chavis bring the house? On first down. Yes. Yes, yes he does. McElroy off his back foot. Oh, my gosh. Colin Peake was not even looking. Oh, is Urban in McElroy's face? Excuse me. Is Nick Saban in Greg McElroy's face on this one? Nick was furious. First down call. Here comes the blitz, and watch Greg McElroy fall away and throw it up for grabs for somebody, Colin Peake, that wasn't even looking for the ball. Just unforgivable. You know, really, Vern was not the red zone, but it kind of was. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Nick Saban was irate with this decision by his quarterback. Kelvin Shepard just waited for the ball to get there, his first interception of the year, and LSU on the road will take a knee. Watch Nick on this play. Oh, man. Right at his quarterback. Only the fourth interception McElroy has thrown this year. But as they neared this end zone, he once threw wide right of Julio Jones. And now, here's Nick Saban with Tracy. Coach, Greg McElroy started out solid, but then two key misses, including that last interception in the end zone. What's going on there? Well, he's doing a good job. You know, we're moving the ball. He's throwing the ball well. He's just got to make better choices and decisions in those kind of situations. We missed a throw, and that wasn't a very good judgment. But, you know, he's playing well. We're moving the ball, and we got to score some points and finish some drives. Speaking of scoring some points, the red zone woes continue. How do you punch it in there? Well, we got to throw the ball when a guy's wide open, you know, make the play on the blitz. So it's, it's not really what we're doing it's how we do it and we need to make some plays but we'll, we'll do it thanks a lot all right, Vern. All right trace thank you <laughs> kelvin shepherd drifting deep covering colin peak who did not expect the ball to be thrown easy pick for kelvin shepherd at 7-3 let's go back to tim brando who's calmer than nick saban football game tis 7-3 as we start quarter number three. Alabama, recall, won the toss, deferred the option to this half. So Javier Arenas and Julio Jones are both deep at the 10-yard line. And Josh Jasper will kick off quarter three underway. Arenas at the seven-yard line. Oh, boy. Driven down short of the 20. And uh, Alabama does get the ball to start. I, I, how do you think Nick Saban addressed his team? Well, I, I think the positive is the way I'd go if I was him. Okay. We, we put up 210 yards in the first half against LSU. We're making the mistakes. We got guys open. We're throwing the ball effectively. I would look that I believe that Ingram's going to get the ball a little bit more in the second half. Maybe a little wildcat. You know, they were spooked by that bad snap early in the game. Right. But, you know, LSU comes into this game and says, we got just as good as athletes as you do, and they are toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Here's McElroy back to throw. He will run instead. Now fires, and it is caught. Mark Ingram on the receiving end. Well, one of the big plays in the first half, I'm sure much discussed at the break, was this pass to Julio Jones. Yeah, I, I think LSU busted on this one. No one cut. Well, think. What do you think? Nobody covers Julio Jones? <laughs> <laughs> that is one you just, you'll, you'll remember that throw. I mean, unless you win the game, you'll remember that throw the rest of your life. Two receptions for 19 yards so far. One touchdown for the year. Here's the handoff to Ingram. Out to the 36-yard uh, line. Harry Coleman made the stop and then help from Jacob Cotrera. Halftime, 
trends, first half trends, actually. Well, you know, I think Jordan Jefferson came on. I like what Les Miles said. We kind of settled down and we're in the game. Greg McElroy, obviously, when you don't score points, we're going to talk about the quarterback. But he, he looked good for a lot of the football game. Two major mistakes. Ingram, are we going to see more? Ingram and Mays is off on a first half. Here's Ingram again. Yes, look at him. Almost. Almost broken. 12 yards. Chad Jones with the tackle. Nice pulling, trapping inside. Barrett Jones comes from right guard and traps inside. And Ingram is so shifty. Both feet on the ground. Jump cuts as good as, you know, that's how you teach it right there, that jump cut. Out of Flint, Michigan. First down and 10. They'll go to him for the third time, and he's got a little stutter step that allows him to pick up three more yards. First down, Alabama. This is what I expected against the nickel package of LSU. They would run the ball against a lamp right there. He's a pass rush specialist. This is what I thought I'd see in the game. Go against the high defensive end, get it to the second level. Again, Barrett Jones gets up on the linebacker. And from here, we could see the play action pass and go downfield with it after you establish the run. That was James Carpenter, number 77, with the block on a limb. Play action now, McElroy. Yep. Oh, it's bobbled. Is it picked off? No, incomplete. Intended for Darius Hanks. Harry Coleman, number 24, there. I thought Brandon Taylor, number 15, might have got his hand on it. Yes, he did. Taylor, strong safety, man-to-man -man coverage, made the play. I mean, you know, John Chavis says in the SEC, if you want to play defense in the SEC, you must be able to load the box. And to do that, you have to play man-to-man -man on the outside. You just saw it right there, man-to-man -man on the outside. Ingram goes out as a wideout now on second and 10. Now comes back to uh, set up alongside. And he gets the handoff, goes left. A heavy dose of Mark Ingram. You just knew it. You just knew it, didn't you? Just too good of a football player. That offensive line that are such a little more athletic than a year ago. Could have been a hold at the top of the screen. Wasn't called by Carpenter. Inside, nice job by Blahos. And this guy, uh, this guy is a special football player, Mark Ingram. Four carries, 46 yards on this drive. He'll get a rest now, and Trent Richardson is on. Up the middle, Richardson, a little heavier than Ingram is, but he gets only two yards on this carry. Drake Nevis, number 92, with the tackle. Mark Ingram, who uh, rushed for 246 yards on this field in the win over South Carolina, and they needed every one of those yards to prevail 20 to 6 in that game. And they're two yards away from that red zone. <laughs> right. What is becoming the dreaded red zone right. for Alabama. Again, Peterson swaps over to cover Julio Jones at the top of your screen. McElroy rolling out, goes deep for Hanks. Caught it! Touchdown, Alabama! Darius Hanks, number 15, beat Brandon Taylor, number 15, and is the drought over? Perhaps. Lee Tiffin for the extra point. Look at this, Burn. LSU is rolling the dice here. Man to man coverage. Here's Chad Jones lining up at a linebacker. Here's the matchup one on one. Cover him. All over the field. You got him. No help. He needed help. A perfect throw from McElroy that time. 
Little sprint out in case pressure came, and he put the ball right where it needed to be playing. Nice start. McElroy and the Crimson Tide, they have gotten the lead back. Eleven forty to go, third quarter. Alabama up by three, ten seven. Now it's time for the Jack Links Beef Jerky Action Cam. Hugh Gary, see, I was perfect this time. <laughs> you know this is going to be a blitz, so McElroy has to run out of the pocket. Look at nobody blocked right here, but there's the lane. Throw it down the lane, easy pitch and catch, touchdown. Well designed, well executed play. And a note for Greg McElroy, that is his first touchdown throw in the last 16 quarters. It reminded me of his big throw against Virginia Tech when he hit the one right down the middle. Here's the kick. Trendon Holiday, number eight, ever dangerous. Trips over his own man at the 25-yard line. That was Robbie Green with the tackle. Now we'll see how LSU responds to that 81-yard drive to open the third quarter. And you know what I liked about that drive for Alabama was the mix. Five runs, three passes. You know, Ingram gets it going and makes it easy for McElroy to throw the ball. Hey, LSU, your turn. From the 25, first and 10. Scott, the deep back. Mitch Joseph, the tight end, and D'Angelo Peterson. He's got the only touchdown of the game for LSU. Here's the option going right. Oh, late pitch, but Scott gets it and turns the corner. Back to you. And here's Jefferson in trouble. Pulls up, lobs it. He's got him. Oh, Scott went right through his hands. Not so great, Scott. No, Jordan Jefferson looked up just as he was crossing the line of scrimmage, and Scott knew he was open and was ready to turn around and make a huge play out of it, and he made it a huge mistake. Third and four. Tolliver right, LaFell left. Again, Richard Dixon, the starting tight end, unable to go today because of a knee, in knee injury. Late on the field, one of the Alabama defenders, Tolliver has a first down. Nico Johnson was late coming on the field. They didn't have a good defense out there. Take a look at the bottom of the screen as number 35 realizes he's supposed to be on the field. Right. Marcus Johnson, number 24, ran off late. Obviously, they make switch defenses and didn't get it out there. Scott on first down to the 40-yard line. Eric Anders, number 32, tackles Charles Scott, number 32. That was like playing with 10 men out there, and that was almost a gimme first down. Second and six. Here comes the six defensive backs on for Alabama now. Marquise Johnson, number 24, is the last to get on the field. Shepard's on the field also. Got it. Jefferson, left side, caught at the 43 by Brandon LaFell. Charles Scott, Mark Ingram, the two featured running backs in this ball game. Scott now nine carries for 36. Ingram 10 for 84. More than half came on that last drive. Third down, three. Scott, quick opener, right side, first down at the 47 of Alabama. Boy, he saw a crease that time and just took it and went with it. 
Scott, it's a read handoff. Watch Jordan Jefferson looking across over here to Eric Anders. Hands the ball off, and he's gashing that thing. As soon as he got it, it was like a sprint through the line of scrimmage there. That's a gain of nine and another LSU first down. Blitz, play fake. Jefferson in real trouble. Throws it away. There should be a flag. There is. Not outside the tackle box, and Nico Johnson got through. Nico Johnson right there. Watch. The tackle box is right here. And he does not get out of the tackle box. After the penalty, loss of down. And Jefferson grabbed his ankle and lived off. He sure did. Jarrett Lee's going to come on the field, isn't he? He yeah. Grab that right shin or ankle. LSU has to call time as Jefferson heads toward the bench. 8.25 to go third quarter. We'll be right back. As we went to the break, Jordan Jefferson limping to the sideline. Gary, another look at the uh, ankle injury. Just as he lets the ball go, watch him twist his right ankle. He lets it go. Nico Johnson throws him off balance, and he twists his right ankle. And so out of the timeouts, Jefferson remains on the sideline. And Jarrett Lee, the sophomore out of Brennan, Texas, starter for much of last year, is on. So also is Russell Shepard. He's on the field. Empty backfield for Jarrett Lee. For the year, five of eight. Throws it deep right side and overthrown. Russell Shepard is confused as to where to line up. Third and 25, and that has been one of the things that has kept him on the bench. Right. Timeout. Oh, no, another timeout. Wow. Now. We saw LSU play Florida in Death Valley. Russell Shepard did not get on the field. And Les Miles alluded to game management problems and assignment responsibilities. Time off. 8.20 to go third quarter. Aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by Direct TV. Third and 25, Jarrett Lee at quarterback. You know, I think that Les Miles would have just rather had the five-yard penalty there. They're most likely going to punt anyway. Timeouts are so valuable in the second half. LSU loads up with four to the left, one to the right. Third and 25, Alabama counters. They will send three and drop eight. Here's Lee underneath, R.J. Jackson. That's a nice gain to the 42-yard line, but leaves them needing five more. Les is going to go for it here. Well, that's uh, remember he passed on fourth and a foot. Right. Same formation. How about that? Fourth and five. They are two of nine for the year on fourth downs. Have never seen this formation for LSU. This is a new look with Russell Shepard back here. Right. This time, four-man rush Same. pass is caught. R.J. Jackson, first down LSU at the 25, and a flag is thrown. There are two flags on the field, one back at the 41. Boy, there was a face mask on the play for sure. Prior to the snap, false start, 78 offense, five-yard penalty, remains fourth down. The play was whistled dead, so right. the face mask penalty really meant nothing. There was no play on the play. Joseph Barksdale, number 78, is right there. Let's see if he flinches. 
Yep. Yes, yep. yes, he did. Yep. Yes, he did. Yep. So it was a dead play, and that's why it wasn't offsetting penalties. You heard, uh, you could see Les Miles say, punt the ball. Punt the ball. So. That formation gave Alabama trouble there. Mm -hmm. And so Arenas quickly drifts back. It was a 16 yard gain that uh, never happened because of the uh, illegal procedure. False start. Here's the punt. Arenas. Oh, another good one. Watch out. Yeah. 45 yard punt. Well, one more look at that big play. Remember, this was a first down. There's the four to one side, but a little flinch right there cost LSU with a first down. You know, penalties have really helped Alabama in the last two games we've done. It was nine to one Tennessee, and today it's seven to one LSU. 10-7 Alabama, 646 to go in the third. Alabama leads it 10-7. They've gotten the ball back for the second time. Let's take another look, Gary, at their opening drive of this half. I really love the mix in this drive. Remember, it started off a pass with Ingram, and then Ingram established the running game. Five runs and three passes. It seemed to catch LSU a little off balance, force the blitz, and McElroy, Jim McElwain, the offensive coordinator in Alabama, took advantage of it. Now they get the ball back for the second time, 99 yards away. Ingram is behind McElroy. Quarterback sneak. Now let's take a look at the uh, a little chippiness there. Possession chart for Alabama, punt, 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 field goal, punt, interception. But then that 81 yard drive to open this half and a touchdown. Second down and nine. Quarterback sneak. Yeah, well, they have to get it off the end zone. I mean, that punt okay. was so good. They had to get it off. Now we'll see where they go with. Peterson giving a lot of room to Julio Jones at the bottom here. Do they dare? Yes, they do. Oh, Julio Jones had it go right through his hands. Boy. Watch Julio Jones try to back up as he's catching the ball. Watch him start to back up. See how he starts to turn before he catches it. You could see the cushion that time. Peterson was willing to give him the five yard hitch and make the tackle and Julio Jones drops it. Third and nine. McElroy, play fake, watch out, throws it, hit his offensive lineman. There's a flag in the end zone. It'll be a safety. It will be a safety. Had intentional grounding on the offense, results in a safety. Oh my. I think it was Drake Nevis, number 92, that gets in on the play. He beats Mike Johnson to make the play. McElroy does the best he can trying to save the play. It was going to be a safety anyway. You might as well throw the ball. You're going to be sacked. That's the best you can do. It hit Barrett Jones, two points. And a player down inside the five-yard line. Looks like it might be Patrick Peterson again. It is. This is a heavyweight matchup between Julio Jones and Peterson. Watch how physical Julio Jones is on Peterson. Watch the arm swat. Pushes him away. He's open. No time for McElroy. Didn't see anything there, did we? Not at all. So Peterson. I wonder if he's got cramps or something. Well, a couple of the trainers are uh, running for the uh, locker room for LSU. Time called. 
10-9 now. Alabama still leads. Let's check in with Tracy. Well, guys, I was just told Patrick Peterson is cramping. It looks like they'll take him directly to the locker room. As for Jordan Jefferson, it was his right ankle that he tweaked. I was told he is okay to go back in, but they're going to stick with Jarrett Lee right now. All right. Thank you, Tracy. And, of course, the free, cut, uh, free kick coming now as Peterson heads toward the LSU locker room. What they usually do in that case is slap on an IV very quickly and get him some liquids and then get him back out on the field. They need that matchup, LSU does. There's always consequences, isn't there, Vern? When Julio Jones dropped that pass, it forced the big third down play and it ended up costing him two points. Here's the uh, free kick by P.J. Fitzgerald, Trendon Holiday at the 25. And he gets out to the 42 yard line. So LSU trailing by one. All right, Tim. Jarrett Lee is still in at quarterback, the sophomore out of Brenham, Texas. They had a high school coach there. Family usually makes the long trek to watch their son play. Here's Scott. Nothing. Now let's go back to the sequence near the goal line. Well, remember the great downed punt, and then on second down, Julio Jones drops the pass. Now it's third down. LSU, one of the worst teams in college football with sacks. It's not counted as a sack, but you might as well have. Here's LaFell out on the right side, out to, to the 47-yard line. Now they came in only 11 sacks for the season for LSU and Julio Jones unquestioned offensive star on this team along with Ingram and a big drop. It's now third and four. Lee has three to the left. Hands off to Scott. See if he got the first I down. I think he did. Yeah, it looked like he did. Rolando McLean with the tackle. So what impact is there with a no Jordan Jefferson compared to Jarrett Lee? I think Jarrett is an outstanding passer. You know, he's got a little more experience. I think the option game might suffer. You know, I mean, it's not a huge part of their game, but they have called it five or six times. First down. LSU. I'm trying to remember correctly, but I think at the end of the half against Alabama, Rashard Johnson, remember, made that interception for one of those pick sixes. Huge part of that football game, and then he finished off the game with the interception in the end zone. Double tight end set now for LSU on first down and 10. They trail by one. This is the pistol formation. Hand off, Scott up the middle, big open, breaks a tackle. Now the chase is on. Kareem Jackson from behind. But a huge gain of 34 yards for Charles Scott, who remains on the ground. Les Miles said, this is my most physical offensive line. They haven't turned out that way, but look at inside. What blocking inside a great rub off on Romando McLean right there. Saran Black also pitched in number 70. Watch him get inside and help and push the defender out of the way. Luther Davis just a well blocked play. And Scott at the end of the 34 yard pickup still he landed on his shoulder on it looked ground. like to yep. me. How about that blocking up front? And that puts LSU at near 100 yards rushing. Also, Alabama's at 102, LSU now at 93. Now, we remind you again as they continue to tend to Charles Scott, his helmet now removed. Alabama with a victory wins the West and earns a spot against Florida in the SEC championship game. LSU victory means they control their own destiny. They would have a tiebreaker edge over Alabama. So a game of some consequence. We'll check on Charles Scott right after this. Charles Scott favoring his right shoulder being uh, 
accompanied as he walks off the field. First down and 10. Trendon Holiday is in a tailback, gets it, bounces to the outside, and uh, is hauled down by Mark Barron. Tracy will get word on Charles Scott as quickly as we can. Well, we chatted with Charles Scott. He's a he's a really fun guy. Uh, with whom to share stories said the one thing he really, he really looked forward to was going one on one with Rolando McLean out on the edge. He said it'd be party time. Yep. Second down. Stephen Ridley number 34 is in Ridley extensive action in the fourth quarter in the win over Tulane last week a flag is down Ridley had 73 yards on seven carries first uh, Rushing efforts of the year. He's been a standout on special teams. This one might go against Alabama. Dead ball. Offside. Number 95. Came into the neutral zone, causing a false start. Five yard penalty. Still second down. And that, that really changes the, di the, the down and distance here, obviously. You know, second and long, and now second and short. You can call any play you want right now. Third penalty against the Crimson Tide. Second down and three. Backs in the eye. Two receivers left. Jarrett Lee with a change. Hand off. Ridley bounces off the tackle of Reamer. Heads for the corner. Touchdown, Tigers. And Les Miles wants to go for two. Justin Woodall, the last man there. Well, big Thomas Parsons, a converted offensive lineman, was in at fullback. The ball was supposed to go left, and Ridley breaks it back right. This, to me, is too early to go for two. And I'll tell you why. If you don't make it, two Alabama field goals beat you. Les Miles almost immediately said, go for two. Courtney Upshaw. On the field for Alabama. Here's Lee. Drills it. Bobbled. Incomplete. D'Angelo Peterson. And it's 15-10 with 319 to go. Stephen Ridley with the TD. Ball is going to go designed left. Watch Ridley. Nothing there. Bounces and goes back to the outside. T Bob Abair stayed with his guy. Good blocking by the center that time. Abair. Ridley, Charles Scott heading to the locker room. Two pretty talented guys have just hit, headed to the locker room. Peterson and Scott. Stephen Ridley, number 34, who was on in place of Charles Scott. Bounces it right, stiff arm, beautifully done on Justin Woodall. Touchdown, and another look, Gary, at the two-pointer. Ball again to D'Angelo Peterson. Basically the same play they hit before. Remember, you can do that in college ball. You can face guard and make the play. Good job by Barron to break that ball up. And word from Tracy Wolfson that it is a collarbone injury, not a shoulder injury, a collarbone injury for Charles Scott. Peterson's already in there. Six plays, 59 yards after the safety. And just a footnote, that was the first safety against Alabama in six years. Javier Arenas inside the 10. Broke a tackle. Out of another. Nice return out to the 32-yard line. And another player down. It's been a game of attrition. Jefferson out with an ankle. Scott with a collarbone. Peterson with a leg cramp. Two offensive starters 
stars even and Peterson defensive stalwart and Vern also Dixon also out there starting an outstanding tight end Richard Dixon did not play in this game. That is Javier Arenas speaking about standing players. Chant uh, starts up Javi Javi. John Eugene basically was the safety that stopped it and it looked to me the way Arenas was ducking his head he was hurting before he got hit by the last two players protecting himself. And so he walks off. Typical football game LSU Alabama isn't it this is the third one we've seen just the same. 3 9 to go. Third quarter. LSU won here two years ago. First battle between Miles and Saban. Saban took his team into Death Valley a year ago. They walked out with a victory. And this one was so much on the line. Here's the uh, Wildcat formation and Ingram out to the 35 yard line. They tried this early in the game and a bad snap or bad hands by. Right. Ingram one of the other and almost lost a fumble. See I don't think the Wildcat with Greg McElroy on the field bothers really anybody. I mean to me I, to me that's the kitty cat. You know I mean it doesn't really hurt anybody. When they bring Richardson and Ingram on the field that gives defenses problems and they have to adjust to it. Second and seven empty backfield with Ingram way wide right. LSU with four down. Quarterback draw McElroy up the middle and he's got a first down at the 47 yard line gain of 11. This is a perfect call probably an automatic Jim McElwain no one in the middle look at that no one in the middle quarterback draw right from the start good blocking inside by Johnson and Vlahos positive play gain of 11 and a first down 10 2 13 to go third quarter. Reverse Pass. back to McElroy and he goes deep for Brad Smelly and overthrows him. Boy. He had to hurry on that one. He had to hurry. There was pressure just before he threw the ball inside. Was it Nevis yes. again? Yes, it was. There's is... Smelly right there. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Watch how fast he has to throw this ball. He can feel it and overthrows the tight end. Well they scored on a similar play against Arkansas. Yes. That time it was Terry Grant who uh, lateral back to McElroy and he found Julio Jones. So a variation on a theme for Alabama. But this one comes up empty. Under two to go third quarter. Ingram. Watch him go. To the 30. Man man. Just an outstanding press of the hole. Watch him press the hole, believe in it, and then cut back and accelerate. One of the outstanding backs you'll see in college football, a Heisman candidate, Julio Jones. Might not be catching a lot of ball, but he balls, but he's doing his job downfield, chicken fighting out there and allowing a little screen for Ingram. Ingram now over 100 yards. Look at that. How about that? Sophomore out of Flint, Michigan. Became a starter in the ninth grade at Grand Blanc High School in suburban Flint. Decided late to come down here. Long time relationship with the family and Nick Saban. Nice, nice blocking at the point of attack. Drew Davis that time did an outstanding job of getting his man turned. First down and 10. Let's go back to him. And a more modest game this time of three. Ingram not used all that much in the first half, 38 yards. In this half, 85. Sixth time he's been over 100. As we mentioned earlier, 246 
here against South Carolina. Look at how different it looks, though. 12 runs, five passes in the second half. They started to run Ingram, and it's opened things up. Peterson back on the field. Trent Richardson. Kelvin Shepard with the tackle. That's a pretty decent trade when you can rest Ingram and bring Richardson out. Offensive line again. James Carpenter right at it. They run it right there in a rush in. Raheem Alem. They said they feel Alem pays the pass too much and they can run inside of him. That's the end of three with a score 15 10 LSU. We'll return to this heavyweight fight right after this word from your local station. Mark Ingram, 14 carries, 123 yards, and uh, he is right in the mix in the conversation for the 2009 Heisman Trophy winner. Hold we, your votes, right? I Yes. Championship yes. Saturday. Colt McCoy playing good football. Tebow still in it, obviously, and Ingram right there. Third and inches. Ingram. Ooh, close. No. Did he get across the line? Forward progress? Well, let's go down to ground level and see what we can find out. Chris Hawkins with the tackle. Yes, first down. He's just got an inch across, if that line is correct. <laughs> just inch across, and it looked like he did. That football crossed it. Good defense, just enough. In the second half, Ingram has 86 yards rushing on nine attempts. Mays Seven and first downs. Excuse me, Vern. Yep, they break off to the right. Here's the toss, near side. Ingram to the four-yard line. Remember the last time we were here against Tennessee? Right. Similar circumstance. Yes. They ran Ingram twice, and then they decided to throw it twice. I, I'm betting they won't do that here. That's my guess. Even on a well-defensed play, Ingram gives you a positive result. This time, Mays goes wide right, and Julio Jones comes bottom of the screen. They continue to run the ball at number 84, just like they told us they would. Here's the toss. Ingram, left side. Fights for yardage, but a great defensive stand led by Kelvin Shepard and Perry Riley, the friends from grade school. They're both from suburban Atlanta. And Terrence Cody comes on the field. I couldn't figure out why we had the crowd reaction. All right, Mount Cody. Mount Cody's out there. They use him often on goal line situations. Terrence Cody, 354 pounds. Oh, That's going to be a penalty. 12 men in the huddle. You cannot call timeout. It does not matter. Oh, a big mistake. Dead ball. Substitution infraction, breaking the hole with 12 players, five-yard penalty, third down. It's one of those unique rules that even a timeout does not save you. Well, Nick. Now, you think it was Julio Jones who uh, should have gone out of the lineup? Good guess. Just from the reaction? What a, what a difference, huh? Oh, boy. There is no Terrence Cody on this play. Third and goal. McElroy. Left side. Mark Ingram tackled by Peterson. Very interesting. And he's hurt again. Very interesting. What do you do if you're Alabama? Remember, two field goals win the game. Here's the tackle Ingram on Peterson. Julio Jones broke open. 
because Peterson throw, saw the ball thrown, I believe. Yep. Peterson was kind of holding off the play for a while. Patrick Peterson down for the second time. It was cramps. Looks like it might be again. Time has been taken. Well, we'll get the answer to the decision by Nick Saban when we come back. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. I'll take you back early in this ball game. Mark Ingram. First half rushing only 55 yards for the team. 217 as these teams have gone to the ground. However, Jefferson finds D'Angelo Peterson for the first touchdown of the game. McElroy to Darius Hanks, his first TD pass in 16 quarters. And then safety. Nevis gets to McElroy, who's called for intentional grounding. And the go-ahead point scored by Stephen Ridley because Charles Scott had gone to the locker room with a collarbone injury. 15 to 10, and uh, Patrick Peterson helped off the field for the second time. So uh, Alabama has decided to attempt the field goal. Peterson made the play and tackle on this one. He exerts so much energy up top that the cramps start again in the legs. Now Leif Tiffin, who earlier this season, five of five against Ole Miss, four of four in the win against Tennessee. And he cuts this one inside the right upright. And Alabama climbs to within two. 12.35 to go. Huge substitution penalty called on Alabama. They trail by two. And a welcome back to Bryant Denny with so much at stake. It's an undefeated Alabama team. Uh, ranked third in the country. LSU once beaten. They're only lost to Florida. If LSU wins this, they control their destiny. And that includes a possible spot in the national championship game. If Alabama wins, they are in the championship game against Florida. Gary Danielson, a huge penalty a moment ago. 12 men in the huddle, even though everybody tries to call timeout. McElroy, Julio Jones, and Nick Saban all try to call timeout. And then he doesn't have a visor, so he goes with the headphones. Now, Greg McElroy. They were looking at third and goal from the two, and they had Mount Cody in at fullback. Ingram at the tailback instead. After the penalty, they settled for the field goal. It's 15-13 LSU. And Trendon Holiday decides to drop to one knee and take a 20. <laughs> I'm laughing because their cords all over the place. Well, that's what we do. Yeah. Sometimes it's easy to choke, you know, with these things. Well, you expected something like this. Well, I knew it'd be close. And I, I like the second half adjustments for Alabama, running the ball with Ingram. And, you know, Jared Lee, you can tell the confidence that Gary Croton has in them. They haven't changed the offense. They're still throwing the ball. I mean, close game, surprise. We've done two of them. This is the third in a row, and they're almost exactly the same. Jared Lee remains in at quarterback, the sophomore out of Brenham, Texas. Flips it out left side. Russell Shepard. Mark Barron misses the tackle. Shepard is down. Well, the smile in the Roger Marianne Staubach home is huge right now. On second down, Shepard tries to turn the corner. Is knocked out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Marquise Johnson, number 24, makes the tackle. Charles Scott went to the locker room with a collarbone injury. Jordan Jefferson, the starting quarterback, on the sidelines with an ankle injury. Nick Saban's bunch trailing by two, third and two, 11.45 to go. And Shepard remains in the lineup. Keelan Williams, a late ad. Twelve men on the field for Alabama. Oh my. I believe it. Nick Saban was signaling timeout. I wonder if LSU signaled the flag came out. It did not look right. I might be wrong, but I was just looking at the formation of Alabama's defense. Prior 
after the delay of game. Timeout, LSU. That is their third and final timeout. Oh. I ironically, Nick Saban and Les Miles were calling timeout on the same play. Top right, see Nick right. Saban? There's Nick right yep. there. He's signaling timeout, but the call went timeout LSU. Wasn't that what I heard? Yes. So both coaches were signaling timeout at the same time. It went against LSU. We'll be right back. And here, after the timeout, LSU's final, third and two. They lead by two. And they've got the ball at the 29. Ridley. Close. Close. Marcel Darius and Rolando McLean were there. Fourth down. Darius made the play low, and then McLean came up high. Watch Darius go low, McLean high. Cody was there also. Yeah, I was watching that battle, Gary. Yep. T. Bob A. Bear battling Terrence Cody. Mount Cody sounds like uh, two characters in the Dan Jenkins novel. It sure does. Fourth down. 10:45 to go. Derek Hilton with a punt. Arenas takes a very nice LSU roll. 47-yard punt, three on the return. Now Cody held heads off, and uh, Mark Ingram, our Red Lobster Scholar Athlete of the Day. Sophomore communication major, made the SEC freshman academic honor roll in 2008. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future shown by donating $1,000 to the University of Alabama General scholarship fund because of the injury as Julio Jones is matched up against a safety McElroy here's Julio Jones gets by the safety and he's got a chance the chase is on and it will be won by Julio Jones That's why some guys are corners and some guys are safeties. The injury Gary spoke of, Patrick Peterson. Alabama will go for two, they lead by four. Only the second touchdown this year for Julio Jones. Richardson. Got it. And which way did they run the ball? Left. They felt they had a matchup they could take advantage of. Here's the matchup. Uh, because of the energy injury, no number seven on the field. They've got a Strong safety. He was a corner a year ago, but he's not a corner this year. He reacted slowly. That slowness from the secondary allowed a great player to get out there and make the play. Brandon Taylor, number 15. Whoops. Carpenter didn't even have to block him on that one, did he? And the two-point conversion, the freshman Richardson. Pitch to the outside. They were pitching left. That's a play they love down there. Alabama back on top. Al Woods, a senior for LSU, injured on the two-point play. 
Looked like he might have got something, a, a knee in the back. Here's Preston Dial, here's Al Woods, watch. Oh, his head got knocked to the side. It was like the hip of Dial sprung the head of Al Woods. I wonder if he had his bell rung on the play. To see his head get knocked to the side like that. Yeah. Julio Jones, 73-yard reception for the TD. Longest of his relatively short career. Lee Tiffin will kick off. Trendon Holiday, number eight. The 5-5 five, five sprinter. Doesn't have a chance to use that speed. Marcus Johnson, number 24. Uh, let's just uh, appreciate the effort of Julio Jones on that 73-yard pass play. And a second look, Gary. Yeah, Kelvin Shepard could not get there in time. Inside, Vallejos did a nice job. Carpenter didn't get his main guy, but he walled off a lemma on the play. It just happened not quick enough in the secondary to react to that play. First down, 10 at the 24. Play fake. Jarrett Lee lobs it out in the general vicinity of Mark Ingram. Eric Anders with the pressure. You got to know, Vern, that Jarrett Lee had wondered if he would ever get a chance to redeem himself. You know, we, I always say it's better to play two years too late than one year too early. Jarrett Lee played one year too early last year. Jefferson went in there. I wonder if did Lee ever thought he'd get a chance. He's got his chance. His team trails by six. Thomas Parsons is the fullback. Keelan Williams, the running back. Lee, near sideline, flag. This should be called against Javier Arenas. We're getting an overthrow from the field judge in the back. They might pick up that flag. Ah. Uncatchable. See, the ball was so far out of bounds. There is no foul for passing and fair. Therefore, there is no foul. Now, we've been talking so much about these officials. Can I get that over here? The field judge actually throws the flag. Watch. And then he looks at the ball and realizes it was overthrown. He makes the same call. He throws the flag. Then he looks for the ball and makes both calls on the play. Great job. Third and ten. In formation confusion now for LSU. Jarrett Lee back under pressure. Marcel Darius gets there first. He's a beast. Yes. He just is a beast. Lyle hit number 65 has a one on one. Watch him throw Lyle hit away on the play. Tosses him away right up the gut. No chance for LSU. Oh, what a play. Remember, it was Darius who had the coverage against Tennessee on the pass. Luke Stocker, yeah. Set up a tying field goal. Here's the uh, Hilton punt. Arenas, fair catch at the 45. And don't forget later in the game, the play of the game presented by Outback Steakhouse. 918 to go. Alabama leads by six. Let me tell you what I'm thinking if I'm Alabama. Of course you don't want to get too conservative, but a field goal makes it a two-possession game. I'm gonna be a little conservative. I got a hot running back. 
Alabama's been able to run the ball left. Let's see if three points is huge in this football game. Here comes Ingram. And he gets about three on first down. Jacob Cotrera, number 54. Made the stop. And Patrick Peterson is back on the field, only two plays too late. Twice out of the game with cramps. Second down eight. Darius Hanks and Marquise Mays both go wide, wide right. And look at they have not put him on Julio. They're playing zone here. Ingram to the 50. It'll be third and five. And uh, let's get an injury update. Here's Tracy Wolf. Well, guys, senior Al Woods on the sideline right now. He did hit his head. They were checking for concussion-like symptoms. His parents came down to check on him, and it's interesting because that's the third time I've seen a parent come to the sideline. Saron Black's mom came down to check on him, and Jefferson's dad also came down. They were all assured that they were okay, guys. 21-15, third and six. Roy, quarterback draw. Out. No. Out. Raheem Alam, number 84, and Drake Nevis were Is, there. Isn't it amazing? McElwain and Sabin thought the same way I did. A field goal here is huge. Let's not make a big turnover. They run the ball three straight times. LSU steps up and forces the punt. If you're LSU, 7.32 to go. No timeouts. You're only going to get the ball one or two more times in the game. Fitzgerald on to punt. Trendon Holiday at the 10 yard line. Oh, they come after it. And a flag is thrown. Oh, boy. Daniel Graff, who blocked a punt last week for LSU, comes after PJ Fitzgerald. And there was no hesitancy from Thomas Ritter. Holy cow. Wow. You know, he had a pretty good run at Running it. into the kicker. Five-yard penalty. It's going to be short. Yes. Can't blame the guy, but he just took a bad angle. He just clipped his foot. Tried to pull up. It's fourth and inches. That's five-yard penalty. They're going to bring Cody on. <laughs> Well, they only better bring out 11 if they bring Cody. Yes, exactly. Well, it appears they're going to go for the, the first defense, down. That's a five-yard penalty, fourth down. Remember, we asked Greg McElroy, Vern, what play did, did, was he most unhappy with against Tennessee? He said the quarterback sneak when they were stopped. I don't think we're going to see a quarterback. Well, maybe we will. No, we won't. No. Nope. Wildcat, McElroy. On the line of scrimmage, wide right, Ingram. He's got it, and he's got a first down for Alabama. Pretty good option. Well, this was loaded up left. Look at all the power to the left over here. Ingram just charges inside, makes that one pretty easily behind Huber. Again, Alabama with a first down, and LSU, no timeouts remaining. And the clock at 6.40. Ingram again. Started the season with 150 against Virginia Tech. He's played his best in big games against top 25 opponents. And he's doing it again today in the second half, particularly. Now with 21 carries for 141 yards. Richardson gives him a breather. There you see it. Second down. McElroy drifting right. Nobody open. Wow. 
Did he catch that? Was that intercepted? Well, Peterson caught it. I'll tell you that. He got a foot in, I think. Well, he was tucking the ball, though. He was tucking the ball away. This is going to be close. My goodness. It's under further review. We do, I did not hear what the ruling on the field was. Incomplete. Incomplete. Patrick Peterson. What a play. His right foot, I thought his right toe came down. Watch this. Hmm. Gee. Looked to me like his right toe came down. The difference between a corner and a safety. Peterson ate this one up. His foot definitely, you see the dirt come up? Yeah. His foot definitely touched the ground. That's the divot. Well, goodness. Well, the left foot, Gary, appears definitely down in the field of play. The, the divot we looked at was his left foot, and okay. then his right foot came on right next to the line. Watch his left foot come down before he catches it. There, and as he tucks it, his right toe touches. In or out. They called it incomplete. Exactly. Hmm. I thought I saw dirt come up again. Watch his right toe dirt come up again. We saw the left foot. Watch the divot from the left foot. I don't know if he has possession yet with his left foot. Right? There's the there, left. Right. Now he tucks it and watch the dirt come up. Little bit of dirt. Watch this. I think it came up twice. Two pieces of dirt. I think it's an interception. I'm going to have to say. I think he intercepted the ball. The original call incomplete. Now Tom Ritter. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Incomplete pass, third down. Well, the replay official, Gerald Hodges, sometimes you're not envious of the guy who's got to make that uh, make that decision. But this is uh, the old saw about indisputable visual evidence. We all got to make decisions. Right. Well, we all got to make them. Reasonable people will That's disagree. That's right. That's exactly right. He saw it different than I did. Third and seven. Roy caught at the 35 down to the 30 first down Julio Jones great pass protection the lack of a pass rush remember how Tennessee so much on third down made plays against this Alabama offensive line LSU has made one of them in the end zone Julio Jones, whose touchdown catch is the uh, difference in the game right now. That was from 73 yards. Now four for a 25 and a half yard average. Marquise Mays, Darius Hanks go wide right. And it's Julio Jones put to the left on first down. Richardson. Couple. Charles Alexander, number 91. Clock at 510. LSU cannot stop it they have used right. all three timeouts and also remember last year when tiffin was kicking it to win the game lsu blocked the field goal so as conservative as you may, may want to be if you're alabama and figure you're going to get three last year it didn't work second and seven 
Richardson remains on the field. Peterson twice out of the game with cramps. No Perry Riley at linebacker for LSU on this drive either. Second down. Richardson. Nothing. Raheem Alam was the first one there, and uh, Jacob Cotrera, number 54, also a part of it. Again, just to repeat, three points makes it a nine point game. And you've got Lee Tiffin. We mentioned four for four against Tennessee, five for five against Ole Miss. He's two for two in this game. Ingram back on the field on third and six. And uh, Tiffin's longest this year, 50 yards. Third and six, under four to go. Ingram darts to his left. And the whistles finally blow. Catrera, first one there. Here is Tiffin, about to become, if he makes this, the all-time scoring leader in Alabama history and with a chance to probably secure the victory. It's up, and he's got it. Can't kick it any straighter than this, can you? When I said, Vern, so many decisions, remember the decision by Les Miles to go for two. They did not make it. That forced this nine-point game. I'm heartbroken. I'm going to be in a car driving. I won't be able to see. I, I got, I got slingbox. I can watch ah. anything I want. <laughs> Well, he just moved beyond Philip Doyle and look at the number four score, his dad, Van. Lee Tiffin, career 347 points. Three just, for three in this one. Just to highlight again, Vern, if LSU kicks an extra point, they have 16 points. That means Alabama wouldn't have gone for two. They would have 23 points. That means it's still a football game. Instead, a uh, very difficult hill to climb. For LSU, 3:04 to go in this one. Touchback. Another look at the missed two-point conversion. Now Jared Lee goes right, knocked away from D'Angelo Peterson, and then uh, wow. It Patrick was close. Peterson. Yes, it was very, very close. Now, I, I yeah, I, I know I'm what you're saying. I'm going to the obvious here. Yes. Had they called it well, an yeah. interception? Yeah. No evidence to overturn I, it. I just thought his toe was down. I, I just got to be honest. That's the way I saw it. Out of the gun, Elon Williams split to the left. Lee, Brandon LaFell. Reverses field. First down at the 32-yard line. Under three to go. 12 yards. Mark Barron with the tackle. Well, the scenario for LSU is somehow score, and then we go onside kick if you're LSU. Keelan Williams again split out. Here's Jarrett Lee. In trouble, Marcel Darius has him again. Second sack in the ball game for number 57. Lyle, Six and a half for the year. Lyle hit, said it was a face mask, and that's how he drove him back that time. I think he was right. Watch Lyle hit. Face mask was, that's what drove him back into the quarterback. Oh, boy. Lyle hit was very upset. And T-Bob Hebert went down when he fell over Marcel Darius. Hebert, who had knee surgery a year ago. And it might have been a re-injury of the knee. Oh, boy. Look at hit right here. He's got his hand under his face mask. That's what he said when he turned to the official, drove him back into the quarterback. Bear helped off. Yeah, that's a, Hebert's been battling all game, hasn't he? Yep. Number 53, P.J. Lonergan is now in number 64. Bear, another 
in this game of attrition who has to be helped off the field. 225 remaining, 24-15 Alabama. They load up the right side this time with four receivers. And they go left with the pass. It's incomplete. Third down. Intended for Tolliver, covered by Kareem Jackson. Perfect technique that time by Jackson. Nowhere to throw that ball. Alabama has not defeated LSU here since 1999. Tigers have won the last four trips here. 01, 03, 05, 07. Third and 14. Blitz, Barron coming. Pass, almost picked off by Marquise Johnson. Tell you, Kirby Smart has not let off the gas. That was a five-man rush, man-to-man -man in the back. Back in. Watch this. Ruben Randall against Johnson. Remember, Johnson was the guy that Steve Spurrier threw five fades against in the football game. Kirby Smart, defensive coordinator. Fourth down, LSU will go for it. Three to the right, two to the left. Alabama backs off. Looks like Nico Johnson is coming, so is Barron. The pass. Intercepted, yes. Robbie Green, number 23. That should do it. You have to throw the ball here. You gotta take a chance. Five man rush, man to man. Poorly thrown. Quarterback and receiver not on the same page, but I give quarterback credit here. Jared Lead, you gotta toss it. Fourth down, you gotta let it go. And you know what that does, Vern? Florida will meet Alabama for the championship of the SEC. The question is, will they both be 12 and 0? Right. Formidable opponents. Alabama's got to go to Mississippi State. Here's the uh, take a knee process. Florida, of course, plays tonight against Vanderbilt. And so Alabama cinches the West. Nick Saban wins in a row against the team he coached for five years. By the way, just a footnote, Les Miles last week won his 49th game as the LSU head coach. He broke a tie that he shared with Nick Saban. This has been a great football game. Injuries played a part. Greg McElroy played a part. He missed a couple, but he hit a couple. And Alabama's put, what, 450 yards up against this LSU defense. Player of the game, Mark Ingram. 22 for 144, 6.5, no touchdowns. But what a second half. They came out after receiving the opening kickoff and it was Ingram left Ingram left Ingram left Ingram left and he picked up 46 yards before McElroy hit Darius Hanks with the touchdown and remember he caught a pass to start that drive near the sideline the final knee Crimson Tide under Nick Saban. 9-0. Remember, they started the season 12-0 last year and lost in that thrilling battle to Florida and then were defeated by Utah. But that's in the distant past right now. The Alabama Crimson Tide win the West. Let's go down to Tracy, who is with Mark Ingram. Mark, congratulations. 144 yards for you on the ground in the biggest game of the season. What went right for you today? Just got to give all the credit to my offensive line, like always. They did a great job of getting a push, getting a hat on the hand, creating seams for me to run through. Receivers did a great job blocking downfield. I just, I just uh, ran off of them and had some big runs tonight. 
both tried to downplay all week the enormity of this game, but it's such a big win. You clinched the West in a rematch with Florida. How much does this mean to you guys? It's real important. It's just another step closer to our goal. We just got to keep winning, keep practicing hard, keep getting better as a team. Thanks a lot. Coach, one question with you, this offense, the best we've seen it so far this season. What went right? Well, you know, we played well in the first half. We just didn't finish drives, and you know, I think it's a great victory for our team. We made the plays we needed to make to win the game. It's a great victory for our fans. I'm really proud of our players. Just outstanding. Thanks a lot, Coach. Right, Enjoy thank it. You. Thank you, Tracy. Mark Ingram, Terrence Cody.